like Jesus, abounding in his fullness. In the English Standard Version, in John chapter 1, verse 16, For from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. And in the NIV version, out of his fullness, we have all received grace in place of grace already given. So God's fullness is constant and limitless. And from his abundance, we have received grace from the Greek word charis. Grace is best described as being given what we do not deserve. Grace upon grace or grace in place of grace implies a constant overflowing gift as believers we constantly receive the grace of God through Jesus Christ. It begins with God reaching out to us out of love by sending His Son to prevent us from perishing so that we may have eternal life instead. The authors at God Question articulated it this way. One hallmark of any interaction with Jesus is grace. Christians receive grace and then more grace. Grace served on top of grace. Grace and then in place of that, more grace. The point is that Christ is full of grace and those who know him get showered with grace. G. W. Knight gives a concrete illustration of grace in today's times. When a person works an eight-hour day and receives a fair day's pay for his time, that is wage. When a person competes with an opponent, and receives a trophy for his performance, that is a prize. When a person receives appropriate recognition for his long service or high achievements, that is an award. But when a person is not capable of earning a wage, can win no prize, and deserves no award, yet receives such a gift anyway, that is a good picture of God's unmerited favor. This is what we mean when we talk about the grace of God. Now, as we close this month, let's celebrate the abundance of God's grace poured upon us. May His grace continue to overflow in our lives. God bless us all.